Hello and welcome to another video on my YouTube channel. I will be showing you how I process my monochrome images using Cyril and Photoshop. I shot a uh, hydrogen alpha green and blue image uh, using a 10 nanometer HA filter and the green and blue filters from my ZW LRGB set. I will start with the HA filter. Click the home button and select a new working directory. I'll create a new one. Elephant from Missouri. Open. Uh, I'm also going to create another one in the uh, main elephant trunk. I'll create an HA so we don't get confused with the HA and the green. First we're going to convert our lights. I've saved them here. Add lights, convert. After that we're going to convert our dark flats. The order doesn't really matter um, as long as you follow the steps, basically. Dark flats. I like to uh, first convert my dark flats and immediately stack, uh, stack them so I can pre-process my lights. We're going to use median stacking for calibration frames, so flats, darks and dark flats. And then convert our flats next. Control all. Flats. Convert. Um, after that's done, we're going to pre process, like I said. Uh, we use master. Um, I'll use dark. Like this. And then dark flats. I won't use that. And then start pre processing. That looks good. You can see a lot of dust modes uh, like this one and this one. But it should be all calibrated out. And a really big one here. Um, stack it. Our flats. With that done, we can select a new sequence or lights. Um, I also use darks for this image, uh, which I shot a, on a different night. And you can, you can basically use your darks as long as the temperature is comparable. I cooled the camera down, my QSI 583WSG to minus 10 on both of these nights, so it, it works uh, fine. Uh, we've already calibrated our flats, so we won't have to use bias here. Then go into here and use our pre-processed flats. Like this. I will use a uh, cosmetic correction now. Make sure that these, uh, the hot and the cold pixels, are both in white and not in red, which is visible here. Like this, because then it will uh, select too many pixels and it won't work correctly. This looks pretty good. Start pre-processing. Then with our pre-processed lights, we can register them. You can just leave these uh, for the simple settings. It's, it should work fine. With our registered lights we can now look at the plot um, if there is for example uh, a one really high you know this frame is uh, of a lower quality and you can exclude them especially if you have poor guiding maybe then it would be uh, would be smart to exclude a couple of frames for now i won't be doing this because i only have 11 frames and i'm going to use all of them um, for the sequence stacking of lights, we can use the average stacking with rejection um, and also weigh your images. This way, images with less noise um, are, 
are used more, basically. They're more important. With stacking done, we can now go ahead and move to green. When we are done with the pre-processing of our green lights, we can now register them. And look at the plot. This frame is of a lower quality, but as far as I can tell, the stars aren't that elongated, so I will just use it anyways. I also only have six lights per channel uh, per green and blue for the green and blue channel so it, it's best if i use them all if you have a lot of frames and there's a peak in the uh, fmhm you know it's of a worse quality and should probably exclude it um, we will also stack these using the average stacking with projection just like our ha And after that we can now go into our blue channel. We will create another working directory and convert our blue files. I remember from shooting uh, during this night that the first two are uh, have very low contrast because of some light from the sun. Uh, so I will just use the last six convert and pre-process them it should still be the same uh, you can change the flats here if you show different flats I didn't so it, I'm gonna leave it like this start pre-processing then the registration once again look at the plot uh, this is what I mean with a peak it, it just spikes up and then goes back down once again, I'll just keep the file and stack it. With the stacking of all of our different channels done, we will create another working directory. I like to call it composite, but we will now composite the different channels into a an RGB uh, image, also known as color. For this, we want to add a convert our different stacks. I'll start with HA because it's my red channel. I'll use it as my red channel. If you type stack, you can it will only show you the stack ones. So it's RPB light stack. Then I will add my green because R G and then at last the blue. I like to call it stacks. And then HA because I loaded it in first, then the green and then the blue. And click convert. This will create another sequence. And then we want to register this sequence. So they're all aligned. All of the images are aligned. After the registration of the different files, we can create our composite. I will be using a luminance. Uh, this is going to be inside of composite and then the R stacks AJGB. This is why I loaded them in in a sequence and then gave them these names because now I know this is HA. This will be HA. This will be green. This will be blue. Uh, I will be using a luminance layer from uh, the HA layer as a luminance layer because uh, it has the most data and is the least noisy and if close we can stretch it as you can see the composite is quite red so we're first of going to want to do a color calibration we want to select a darker part of the image for example right here 
select use current selection background neutralization and check your RGB how that looks for me that's pretty good then we are going to select a bright star and draw a box around it like this make sure you select a little bit of the background not too much something like this is fine and click use current selection here click apply that's done quite a good job of color calibrating our color and next we are going to crop out the image because right here there's a composite and sticking artifact and that's not that great especially if you want to do a background extraction um, then crop out something like this because this is the main nebula and this I don't really care about so I'll just do a quite a heavy crop the next step is going to be to for me to rotate the image because I just prefer this uh, just looks better in my opinion with that done we're now going to do a background extraction it's a lot darker here and a lot brighter here so a background extraction will fix that gradient We will select the standard values for the most part, 0 0.5, 20, and the grid tolerance you're going to want to play with it a little bit, just to make sure you're only selecting the background and nothing of your nebulae or galaxy, whatever you've shot. Compute background, apply, that looks pretty good, it, it has removed most of our, our gradient, I'm quite happy. After the background extraction we can go and stretch the image, switch the viewing mode to linear if you haven't already um, and do a histogram transformation for the easiest. You can also do a more uh, advanced uh, stretching method using the S A sign transformation. This preserves more of the color but for now I will use the histogram transformation. Um, this looks pretty good, a bit too bright in my opinion, so I'm going to zoom in using the plus here, and adjust it slightly back, something like this, apply. With that we are now done in Cyril and we can save the image to TIFF, 16 bit unsigned, and it's, I like to call it composite and then HAGB. Something like this. You may have used just the normal red channel, so instead of HA you might write uh, R. With the saving, we can now go into Starnet, Browse, and then it's right here. Starless Running. You can also use finer tiles, this will take 4 times as long, uh, but I found that the result is minimal, but just test it out, see if it works for you. When Starnet is done, we can open up both files into Photoshop. I have them here, the composite and the starless composite, open them both up. We will now first apply our starless image to our composite image to result to get a an image that is just the stars. You can go into image, image apply, starless, you're going to go and select the starless image, then subtract, and you can play with your with this one a bit, just whatever looks good and selects the entire star of all of the stars. This is a bit too little so I will use 15. That looks really good. Click OK. Call it stars. After we've created our star layer we'll get back to it later and first look at our starless. As it's quite noisy because it's only 4 hours of data, I'm going to start with some noise reduction. For this I use camera raw filter. Zoom in a bit so we can see what 
we're doing. And first we'll start with some color noise reduction, just so all of these weird colors are gone. And most of it is gone. And some noise reduction. Go for 50 for now. You want to make sure you're not losing any detail in the nebulae itself. The galaxy. But you want to preserve most of it. That looks pretty good to me. Okay. After that I'm going to stamp it. Ctrl Shift Alt E. So I call it noise reduction. Stamp. I am going to adjust my the, my histogram a bit because it's the image is still quite dark. So I'm going to Start with a S curve. Increase the contrast while also increasing the brightness. It's quite a heavy one. I kind of like it. Like this. Um, after that, I will copy this layer. And there's a bit of a bluish green cast here. I'm going to go into filter, camera raw filter. And I am going to slide down to the color mixer. In here, I like to go into the saturation and lower or and click this button here. Go to the part I want to reduce and reduce it just a bit. This looks pretty good. It's a bit of green here still. I will reduce the green. And because I know there isn't any green, there isn't is rarely any green in space, so we can just remove it completely. Click OK. As now there is still quite a bit of noise, I'm going to stamp again using Ctrl Shift Alt E and then go ahead into select. Uh, color range and select the shadows because in the in the nebulae itself the noise isn't that bad but when we look at the background it is quite noisy. We hit OK. You now see that the the bright parts of the nebulae aren't selected while the rest is. I'm going to feather our selection as well by about Four pixels, just to make sure that only the really bright parts are selected. After that, we can hit this button here, which will create a mask. We can go into filter now, blur, Gaussian blur. Make sure you are selected on the image itself and not the mask, like I was. Into Blur, Gaussian Blur. Then I'm going to reduce it a bit. Zoom in. That looks pretty good. Then because the blend isn't that nice at the moment, there's more noise here, less noise here, I'm going to reduce it the layer a little bit, the overlay. Pretty happy with that. And then I will also make some and then as the last step I will make some final adjustments in the camera raw filter. Just this is purely personal preference. Yeah, that's pretty good. I quite like that. Now we're, as a final step, going to add our stars back in. Uh, the stars are a bit elongated, especially in the corners, so I'm going to blur them. Just a bit, not that much, but a little bit. Blur, Gaussian blur again. And quite a little number. Don't go too high. A little bit is fine. 
you're also blurring out the star net artifacts in the stones. So even if your stars aren't elongated, it's all always good to at least do a little bit of blur. Next you're gonna want to change your blending mode either to bleach or this other one. I like to use this one. It brightens up the image a little bit, so I go into levels and bring it back a little bit. Something like this. Stamp it, Ctrl Shift Alt E. And this will be my final <laughs> kind of final image. As a final step, you're going to want to export it. Quick export as PNG. It's called final. Save. Thank you for watching. I hope you found it useful. And hope to see you in the next video.